Hi, and welcome to the technical presentation series on renewable energy studies. In this video, I will discuss the photovoltaic converter controls. Full converter PVs transmit all the power produced by their solar panels with a DC-AC converter system which uses voltage source converter. The PV array might be connected directly to the DC bus or through an additional DC-DC converter which is not represented in this figure. The maximum active power the PV arrays can generate depends on the atmospheric conditions, such as the temperature and the irradiance. The active power production can be controlled by adjusting the DC bus voltage. More information on this topic will be provided in another video. A DC resistive chopper is used for the DC bus over voltage protection. A line inductor called chalk filter and an AC harmonic filter are used at the grid side converter to improve power quality. This slide is from a previous video, as a reminder. The PV controllers in the park receive their control references from the power plant controller, also called PPC. In the case of the EMTP 4.1 generic model, only the park reactive power control loop of the PPC is modeled. To control the reactive power, the PPC sends a voltage deviation reference to all the PV controllers. By default, the controllers control the voltage to 1 per unit. If the PPC commands more reactive power, it sends a positive voltage deviation reference and the converters end up producing more reactive power. It exists other type of control where, instead of sharing a voltage deviation reference, the PPC sends a reactive power reference to the PV controllers. This technique is not implemented in version 4.1, but will be in a future version. Here is the control and protection diagram of the EMTP 4.1 PV park. The sampled signals, which are the voltage and current on each side of the converter, are put in per unit and filtered. The input measuring filters are low-pass type. The compute variables block computes the variables used by the grid control 1 device and the protection system. In this block, you will find a PLL, which is an algorithm which will determine the voltage angle and frequency and helps to achieve the transformation from the ABC domain to the DQ0 domain, which is used for control purpose. The protection system block contains low voltage and over voltage relays, converter overcurrent protections and DC resistive chopper control. The LVRT and OVRT functions are in this block. The EMTP 4.1 generic model is controlled using vector control techniques in the DQ0 domain. This control type is very commonly used by PV converter manufacturers. Some of its big advantages is that it allows decoupled control of real and reactive powers. The real power is only controlled by the D axis and the reactive power is only controlled by the Q axis. Another advantage of this control type is that when the system is balanced, the D and Q axis currents and voltages are constant in steady state. They are therefore easier to control than sinusoidal quantities. Other control types are also common, like resonance control for example. This type isn't available in the generic version yet. On the grid side, the DQ transformation angle follows the voltage here, right after the choke RL filter, at the converter transformer terminal. The D component corresponds to the real power and the Q component corresponds to the reactive power. Two level control loops are utilized. On the D axis, the outer loop regulates the DC bus voltage to its reference value. The output of this loop is the D axis current reference, which will be the reference for the inner loop. The inner loop, which is the fastest one, produces the D-axis voltage reference to follow the current reference. Before being used by the inner loop, the current reference is limited by the IDQ limiter block, so the converter does not exceed its current capability, which could cause hardware damage. The limiter function will be explained later on in this presentation. The gains of the outer loop PI controller for the D-axis are calculated based on the DC bus capacitance. The equation used is explained here. 
the DC bus voltage reference, which is the reference of the overall D-axis control loop, is provided by another control scheme. Two options are available. The first one is to produce the maximum power available. In this case, an algorithm called the maximum power point tracking will determine the DC bus voltage reference in order to reach this value. The second is to follow another active power reference assumed to be lower than the maximum active power available. In this case, according to the power versus voltage curve of the PV cells, a DC bus voltage reference is determined. More information will be available in another video. These two options are available from the general tab of the PV device mask. It should be noted that in the EMTP 4.1 version, whatever option is used, the DC bus voltage reference is calculated at the beginning of the simulation only. The DC voltage reference dynamic control can easily be added by users, even though it has a slow dynamic and may not have any influences in most cases. The Q-axis loop now controls the Q-axis voltage in order to follow the voltage reference sent by the PPC for the park reactive power control. The outer loop produces a Q-axis current reference, which is also limited by the limiter and sent to the inner loop, which commands the Q voltage. The outer loop here is a proportional controller where the gain is set by user in the mask. For the grid side converter, the gains of the inner loops depend on the total impedance seen by the converter. The transfer function is shown here, where R and L are the resistances and inductances of the filter choke, the converter transformer, the park transformer, and the grid thevenant impedance combined. In the generic model mask, user can set the rise time which determines the inner loop speed. It is typically set to 10 milliseconds. The voltage control is at the converter terminal, but the voltage measured is after the choke filter. Therefore, a feedforward compensation is done before putting the converter voltage reference back to the ABC domain. Let's now explain the limiter device. During normal operation, the controller gives the priority to the active currents. The controllers are equipped with an FRT function to fulfill the grid code requirements regarding voltage support. The FRT function is activated when the grid voltage deviation is above a user-defined threshold and is disactivated when the deviation goes back below another threshold. When the FRT function is active, the controller gives the priority to the reactive current. All the FRT threshold can be found in the converter control data tab, as well as the parameters required by the inner and outer control loops. The PWM and sampling rate inputs are important only if the converter is modeled in detail with IGBTs. They are not in the case of average value model. The difference between average value model and detailed model of inverter will be explained in another video. The type of filter can be varied. It can have an influence on certain studies like subsynchronous control interaction, but are of minor importance for most studies, so you don't really have to worry about it. The external system equivalent is important to set up as, like I explained a few slides ago, the grid side converter inner loop gains are calculated using this information. Let's now quickly demonstrate the model in EMTP. For this demonstration, we will use the example from the Renewable Energy Toolbox in the section PV. This example consists of a PV park of 75 MVA connected to 120 kV transmission grid. In the original example, a fault is applied here at one second, but we will remove the fault for this demonstration. Let's quickly take a look at the park control. This device is the aggregated version of the park controller, where all the converters are aggregated into one. This model has been described in more detail in the first video of this series. The point of common coupling inside the sub-circuit is here. You can see here the power plant controller, which deliver the voltage deviation reference to the aggregated converter. 
starting from this point here, everything is aggregated. You have here the collector grid equivalent, the converter transformer aggregated, and here the time domain model. The converter control is in this block here. We can see here the same scheme that was presented in the PowerPoint. And if we go in this block, couple control, we can see here the compute variables block where the PLL can be found and where we go from ABC to DQ0 and the grid control block with the outer and inner loop. For this example, let's vary the irradiance and see the impact of the power generation. The initial irradiance of the park is set in the mask. Right now, the irradiance is 1000 watt per meter square. Let's change it and put 800 watt per meter square. We can see that now the MPPT determines the maximum capacity available at 60 megawatt. Because we changed the initial condition, the load flow simulation must be redone. We go to simulate, simulation option, we check find load flow and run the simulation. We will see that the new power produced by the park with this new value of irradiance will be displayed here. Now let's do the time domain simulation and simulate an irradiance variation. We can simply include this device. This first device here is actually the simulation time and a table function here simulate the irradiance variation. The variation is defined in a lookup table and can be visualized here. Let's place some scopes inside the model in order to visualize several quantities. The first thing is we can visualize the DC voltage across the capacitance. Let's also go in the control block and visualize the D-axis reference. First, we will unlock the circuit by trying to move a device and place a scope. The overall power generation of the park will be visualized through this PQ meter here. Let's now run the time domain simulation. The result will be visualized with scope view. The first scope here is the voltage across the DC bus. The second scope will be the D axis current reference from the outer loop. The third one will be the irradiance variation. And finally, we will see the power and reactive power generated by the park. Let's superimpose these two powers. As we can see, initially the park produced the same active power as during load flow, 60 megawatt. We can also see that the initialization is perfectly done. At this point, one second, the irradiance is varied, and we can see the active power of the park is varied as well. We can see that here, in zooming, there is a slight variation of the DC voltage, and here, the D-axis current reference is also changing with the irradiance. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was useful for you. If you have any questions or comment, please use the comment section of this video or send us an email at info at emtp.com. You can also reach out to us on LinkedIn. Thanks again and have a good day. Bye.